Hi everyone, Greg from Pilot Institute here. And in this video, I wanna talk about how high you can fly your drone. And the answer may seem simple, right? 400 feet AGL, that's what we always say. Well, it is not that simple. There is actually different situations where you can fly sometimes higher, sometimes lower. The rules are different if you're a recreational flyer or if you have a part 107 certificate. So we're gonna put it all in one video. If you're a recreational flyer, if you're a part 107 pilot, you probably will learn something from this because there are some tricky situations. But um, we're gonna talk about why this is so confusing in the first place. Then I'm gonna talk about AGL versus MSL. If you've never heard these terms, stand by. We're gonna talk about them in a second. And we talk about how high you can fly as a recreational flyer when you're flying for fun and how high you can fly if you're flying as a remote pilot under part 107. So let's get to it. So let's talk about why this is so confusing. And the reason why this is confusing is primarily because there's two different sets of rules that you can uh, operate under in the United States. The first one is the recreational flying exemption. Uh, it's covered under USC 44809. If you've watched some of our videos in the past, we talk about all these rules. And then the other set of rules, which is kind of the, the primary set of rules in the US, which is called part 107. And that covers everything else. Everything else that is not for pure recreational flying is gonna be covered under part 107. In order to operate under part 107, you need to take a written exam, you need to pass that and then get a certificate from the FAA. And um, as such, because you have to take a test, the opportunities to fly higher are more common, higher than you would if you operate under 44809. So let's talk about another confusing part, which is two terms. The first term is called AGL, above ground level, and then the other term is called MSL, mean sea level. Some people call it above sea level. That's not really a term that we use in aviation generally. So you'll hear me say mean sea level. You're gonna say, what's the difference between the two? It's the same thing, really, uh, between mean sea level and above sea level. It's basically the height, well, above sea level. Why do we call it mean? Mean is because, well, across the, the world, there is an average height mean, there's an average height of sea level, and that's what the uh, number is being used for these calculations. But let's take a look at this graph right here, because I think this is the, the easiest way to explain the difference between AGL and MSL. Think about AGL as height above the ground. I'm six feet tall. The top of my head is always six feet above the ground. Okay, AGL, that's really the, 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 the very simple answer. If we have a hill, that is a thousand feet higher than sea level, then we're gonna call this a thousand feet MSL, mean sea level. If I'm sitting, if I'm standing on top of that hill, I'm six feet tall, the top of my head is at a thousand and six feet MSL, but it's still only six feet above the ground. All right, now let's take a look at the 400 foot rule. I'm sure you've heard that 400 foot rule. This little green area right here, that's how tall you can fly your drone in most places in the country. It is 400 feet AGL. Right here at sea level, it's also 400 feet MSL because it's the same, right? There is no difference. But if we get to the top of that hill right here, we have 400 feet AGL. It follows the contour, it follows the terrain at all time. That green area is where you can fly. Now, if we look at the top of that green area on top of that hill, that thousand foot tall hill, then we are at 1400 feet MSL, mean sea level. It's a unit, right? MSL versus AGL, it's a unit. It's the difference between um, between what reference we're choosing in order to measure a distance. So I wanna, I wanna make this clear because we're gonna be talking about other things in a second. Now, there's another confusing term and that's the term of your controller, the height above your takeoff point. At one point you're gonna take off, you're gonna look at your controller and wherever you take off, it's gonna say zero feet. And then as soon as you start climbing, then it's gonna start counting from the point from which you took off. The tricky part is that it's not always the same as AGL, which is what's in the regulation. So we're dealing with three terms here. There's only one that matters, it's AGL, above ground level. So let's take a look. If we were to fly our drone and we follow the terrain a little bit here and we get to take off and we go all the way to the top of that point right here, we're still in the green area, which means that we're still technically legal to fly. Now let's take a look at what our controller is gonna read. If we look at our controller, the telemetry right here is gonna read 1400 feet from the point from which we took off. We took off at sea level, we went to the top of that hill, another 400 feet on top of it. Now we're 1400 feet in height from the point from which we took off from. Okay, I wanna make that clear. Now let's take a look at another example here. What if we were taking off from the top of the hill? 
and we take off from the top of the hill and then we go up 400 feet. What do you think your controller at this point is going to indicate? I'm going to let you think for a second and it's going to indicate 400 feet above the point of takeoff. So 400 feet on the controller, all good. Now what if you fly forward? If you start to fly forward down on top of the valley right here and you maintain that altitude, what is your controller going to indicate? It's still going to indicate 400 feet. That's the height above the takeoff point. Is that what the FAA cares about? It's not. What the FAA cares about is the height above the ground. What is your height above the ground here? Well, we kind of know because we know the, 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 the design of the terrain right here. And what it is, it's 1400 feet AGL. We're 1400 feet above the ground at that stage. Is that okay? It's not because the FAA says in most cases you can only fly up to 400 feet AGL. Even though your controller says 400 feet, it's not the actual AGL. Now you're going to say, Greg, how do I know that I'm at 1400 feet or I'm not at 400 feet AGL? And the answer is, it's not that simple. It's pretty complicated to figure out exactly where your drone is in relationship to the ground because the ground keeps changing. Now, if you live in Florida and you're flying above the beach, probably not that big of an issue. If you live in my area where we have hills all around us, then it becomes a little bit more tricky to figure out what 400 feet is. So you need to do a little bit of research. You need to find out kind of what the terrain looks like around you before you fly. You need to estimate what 400 feet above the ground looks like. And then eventually, well, with experience, you'll uh, you'll get used to it. But it's it's not a very simple, easy answer. And you're gonna say, why is it that your drone doesn't tell you that? Well, your drone doesn't have the sensors that have the ability to measure above the ground. So I'll stop talking about this. Let's move on to the next topic, which is how high can I fly as a recreational flyer? And the answer here is fairly simple. If you're flying in uncontrolled airspace and uncontrolled airspace is basically away from airports in class golf airspace then the maximum altitude is 400 feet above the ground we just mentioned that a little green area that i showed you in the graph that's where uh, you have to stay within you have to stay within 400 feet above the ground now if you're flying in controlled airspace near airports at some point, you may end up in an airspace that requires authorization. Now, if you're a recreational flyer at this stage, you probably don't know all of the different types of classification, but there are class B, class C, class D, and in some parts of class E require authorization. At that point, the maximum altitude depends on where you are at that spot on, on the airport. It depends on the airspace around where you are. So if you take a look at this graph right here, this is an example of where I live. We, I live close to a, a class D airspace, class Delta, which is controlled, which, is, which requires approval to fly. And if I go, I find this grid, which you can find on apps such as Aloft or Before You Fly, or here, the UAS facility map. And you can see that these numbers tell me how high I can fly in that airspace once I get approval. So if you look right here where it says 250 feet, 250 feet means that I can climb up to 250 feet above the ground, follow the terrain, as long as I get approval beforehand using an app, again, like a loft. We have videos that show you how to do this, so I'm going to put a link down there so you can see exactly how you do this, but that's how you would figure it out. So in controlled airspace, if you're a recreational flyer, you can fly, well, it could be zero feet, it could be 250 feet, it could be 400 feet. Now you're going to say, what about that zero feet? What does that mean? It means that at that stage, you're too close to the airport that you can't fly. If it says zero grid, you can't fly. You can't even get approval to fly in there. It's not available. There's no waiver for recreational flyers. So that's it. That's, that's as high as you're going to be able to go, zero feet. You can't take off, okay? Another note about this, there's no waivers that are available to recreational flyers to fly any higher than 400 feet AGL at all time. So the max you'll ever be able to go is 400 feet AGL. That's it. I know what you're saying now because you may have heard of somebody saying, well, if I'm within 400 feet of an obstacle, then uh, I can fly more than 400 feet on top of it. Yes, but only if you are a Part 107 pilot. This is only available under Part 107. Okay, so if you're not a recreational, if you're if you're a recreational flyer and you don't have a Part 107 certificate, you cannot fly 400 feet on top of a man-made structure or obstacle and use that rule. Even better, well, I don't know if it's better, but this is something that I always hear people are confused because they say, well, if I take off from the top of a building, then I can fly 400 feet on top of that building, not as a recreational flyer. 400 feet AGL, the ground being the natural ground, not the top of a building, not the top of a car, not the top of a tower, it doesn't matter. Okay, so here we have an example. You have this building, this building is 200 feet tall. Now, 
you are as soon as you take off. Even though your controller is going to say zero feet, you are technically already 200 feet above the ground. So that means that you can only add another 200 feet on top of that. Your controller at this stage can only read 200 feet max, and that's it, if you want to stay legal. All right, I wanted to make sure that all of this was clear because this is uh, an area that we always find people uh, making mistakes online when they, when they leave comments. Uh, you, you just can't do that. Okay, now the next thing is, what about part 107? You're a part 107 pilot, how high can you fly? And it's kind of the same thing. You have to look at where you are. If you're flying in controlled airspace, the maximum altitude is the, width, is the one that's on the UAS facility map. You can actually get a waiver to fly higher than what is on the U.S. facility map. Remember that area that I showed you, 250 feet? Let's say I wanted to fly 300 feet. I can do that. It's called further coordination. You have to go on the FAA Drone Zone website, and then you can submit to fly up to 300, 400, whatever the FAA is going to approve you to do. Even if you are in a zero grid, as a Part 107 pilot, you can still request to fly higher than the zero grid. I've done that several times, and a lot of people do. You just have to go again to the FA Drone Zone, submit that request, and then you'll be able to do that. This is not available for recreational flyers. You cannot do that as a recreational flyer. If we go into airspace that does not need approval, the maximum that you can do is 400 feet AGL, unless, unless you are within 400 feet of a structure, and at that point you can fly as high as 400 feet on top of that structure, as long as it doesn't take you into airspace that requires approval. Let's take a look at this. Again, this is in uncontrolled airspace. You can do this. You can go right here. There is 400 feet right here. That's how high we can fly typically, 400 feet above the ground. Now, let's say that there is a cell phone tower right here that you want to inspect. It's a 700 foot tall cell phone tower. So now what? We have, as long as we stay within 400 feet of that obstacle, of that tower, then we can fly within that entire green area right here. So far, so good. This is only true if you take off in airspace that does not need approval. I'm going to say that again. This rule right here only applies to Part 107 pilots and only if you are flying in an area that does not require approval. If you are flying in Class B, in Class C, in Class D, or Class E2, taking off, you cannot use this rule. The, 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 the altitude that you were given, the 250 feet or 100 feet, whatever it is, is absolute. It's 100 feet above the ground or 250 feet above the ground. That's it. You cannot use this rule. I want to make that clear because a lot of people don't understand this section. Here's another example for you. I'm going to ask you, ask you to think for a second. Let's say that on top of that tower, there was a Class E airspace starting at 700 feet. Can you fly your drone right here in this area? I'm going to let the little Jeopardy music play in the background for a second. And what do you think? And the answer is yes, you can go in there. You're going to say, Greg, isn't Class E control airspace? Yes, it is. But the FAA says that you only need approval to fly in Class E when it is primary to an airport starting at the surface. Class E2, for those of you that know your class, classes of airspace, Class E2 is the only one that requires approval. So in this case, this is a class, uh, not a Class E2. This is a Class E starting at 700. In this case, you can actually enter this airspace without approval because, well, because the FAA says you don't need approval to fly in there. Now, let me flip that question. What if instead of a Class E starting at 700, what if we had a Class Bravo airspace that started at 700 feet? Now, can you go and enter that airspace right here using the, the 400 foot rule that I just gave you? Again, right here. And the answer is no, unless you get approval to enter that airspace. Because now you're trying to enter an airspace that requires approval from the FAA, in which case you would need to submit paperwork in order to do this. All right. I want to make, give all these examples because these are all examples that we see online and we see in forums all the time. Now, if you wanted to do this, you can get a waiver. You can go on the FAA Drone Zone to do this. You can also get a waiver to fly higher than 400 feet anywhere in the country. You're in class golf airspace, and typically you're limited to 400 feet. You want to fly higher than that. You can go to the FAA Drone Zone, submit a waiver, explain to the FAA what you're trying to do, and then, well, and then they'll let you fly. Okay, I hope this is clear. I hope this clarified some of the information. As always, leave your comments. If you have questions, I'm sure you guys will have questions. Leave them down in here and uh, fly safe. Thank you.